Science is all around us. Just about every activity we do can be broken down into some type of scientific equation. And cooking is no different. Your kitchen is a laboratory, and every time you make dinner, you are conducting a scientific experiment. Here, every ingredient is a component, and every recipe is a chemical equation for a delicious way to learn about the science of cooking. To help us conduct today's scientific experiment, we've invited Chef Paula from the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services to prepare a nutritious breakfast to start the day off right. Hi, I'm Chef Paula. I'm joined today with Julian and Trinity. Are you guys ready to cook? Yeah! Awesome. We are going to make Fiesta scrambled eggs and a salsa made right in a blender. We're going to be using a variety of ingredients that are grown right here, fresh from Florida. For the Fiesta scrambled eggs, we're going to start with eight eggs, a half a cup of milk, two tablespoons of butter divided, and a quarter cup of shredded cheddar cheese. For the produce, we have a red pepper, a green pepper, onion, jalapeno, and avocado, and spinach. We'll get to the blender salsa ingredients later. For a scientific experiment, that didn't sound very scientific. Let's bring in Dr. Matthew Curran, a real scientist, to tell us what kind of sciencey things we need to be looking out for during this experiment. Sure, let's begin with matter. Anything we can touch, taste, or feel like a piece of fruit or a vegetable is matter. And all matter is composed of atoms. Now when two or more atoms are combined, whether they are the same or different, a molecule is formed. Molecules can then interact with each other, whether they are the same or different. And when they interact, they form things that we see and touch every day, such as fruits and vegetables. I didn't understand a word he said. Yeah, that was too scientific. Let's see if we can simplify this. Preparing food is a lot like doing science experiments. You're taking different substances, combining them together, maybe adding a little heat to create a meal. The meal you end up with depends on the ingredients you start with and the way you prepare them. Sound close, Dr. Matt? Pretty close, but we're gonna need to go a little deeper. Let's start with the elements. Elements are like the ingredients of a recipe, only instead of peppers and onions, you have elements like hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and iron. In fact, there are about 118 of them, and they are organized on a chart called the periodic table. Anything you'd like to consider in nature is made up of either an element or a combination of elements. Each element on the periodic table has its own specific properties. This is a hydrogen atom. It has one proton and one electron. It is the smallest unit of the element hydrogen. This is an oxygen atom. It has eight protons and eight electrons. It is the smallest unit of the element oxygen. When two or more of the same or different elements form chemical bonds with each other, a molecule is formed. The atoms in any type of molecule are in fixed ratios and called compounds. For instance, the molecule dihydrogen monoxide is a compound with a fixed ratio of two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. This molecule is commonly called H2O, but we also know it as water in its liquid state. But when two or more substances are combined, and you can vary the ratio, you have a mixture. Let's take salt and pepper for an example. You could easily have more salt than pepper, or more pepper than salt, but no matter how much you shake them, we still call it salt and pepper. Uh, quick question. Will there be any cooking in this cooking show? Maybe. But first, did someone say pop quiz? All right, kids. Take equal portions of the elements sodium and chlorine. Combine them together and you'll form the common molecule sodium chloride, or NaCl. You know it as table salt. The question. Is table salt a compound or a mixture? When two or more elements like sodium and chlorine are chemically combined, in fixed ratios, a compound is formed. Sodium chloride has a fixed ratio of one to one, so it is a compound. That's right. Yes. Dr. Matt, tell them what they've won. They've won the satisfaction of knowing the difference between a compound and a mixture. And the key is a fixed ratio. Remember, the elements in a compound, such as water, are always present in fixed ratios. However, in mixtures, such as salt and pepper, they are not. Well, that's all the time we have for now. 
We now know more than we want to about atoms, molecules, and elements, mixtures, and compounds, but they're just a few ingredients in the science that goes into preparing a meal. Be sure to join us for the next episode of The Science of Cooking when we hear Chef Paula say... I don't know about you, but I prefer the dinner table to the periodic table. <laughs> <laughs>